Welcome cat moms and cat dads. Grab the kitties, curl up on the sofa. We have an awesome show for you tonight. Um, before I introduce the show and tell you what we've got in store for you all, uh, go ahead and tell us your cat's name and where you're watching from. Let's see, oh, <laughs> Lori, yes, you thought it was you. Yeah, and it was not you, Lori. Uh, Tina, thank you for being here. Crystal, hello. Um, appreciate you guys' patience. Jen Murphy's here. Hi, Jen. Okay, so pop those cat names in the comments. Where are you watching from? And uh, yes, Jeff, exactly. Third time. Indeed is a charm here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you guys about what we've got, on, what we have in store for you tonight. I'm I'm saying that we we can kind of theme this whole show the big reveal because we got some really cool stuff to reveal to you. For one, we're revealing a whole new look for World's Best Cat Litter. We are revealing our special guest tonight. We're going to be revealing lots of ways that you can win some awesome prizes. So you are in the right place. Um, now that we've got the technology working for us, Kelly is here. Um, Chelsea's cat's names are, oh, I missed that. It, this The comments are going by so quickly. Uh, so Keller and Sophie in Virginia. Um, Amy's cat's name is Zoltar from Illinois. Uh, lots of folks saying they love World's Best Cat Litter, so that's awesome. And let's see, oh, meow, goodness, I love that. I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> Okay, guys, I could watch your comments all night long, but um, I, I want to first welcome and thank our shelter partners that are tuning in tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about the shelter partners. So World's Best Cat Litter uh, has a program called Give Litter, and they support shelters that house and, and keep healthy cats um, in their care until they can be adopted. Now, 3 million cats make their way into shelters every year, which is just an astounding number. And World's Best Cat Litter has been supporting shelters um, for many years by donating tons and tons of cat litter. So we have a way tonight for you to actually help donate more uh, pounds. We're not gonna donate necessarily a ton, but we're gonna donate five pounds of cat litter every single time we see a social media post with the hashtag, give a crap. Yes, give a crap. So I think the easiest way to do that would be to just share this show, share the live right to your feed. Tell your friends, hey, if you love cats and if you hashtag give a crap, check this out. And boom, just like that, five more pounds go to all the shelter partners. Uh, let's see. Oh, Crystal does volunteer work with rescues. That's awesome. Um, Judy has five foster babies, Lucille, Gertrude, Lance, Sophia, and Ethel. I love those names. Okay, and more folks from Illinois. I'm from the Chicago area. So shout out to Illinois. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to introduce our very special guest. But before I do, I just want to say there are trolls out online here at Facebook. So I want to warn you not to click on any links that are not from World's Best Cat Litter. So just keep a close eye before you click on any link. Make sure it is from World's Best Cat Litter. Okay, well, back by popular demand, my guest, Dr. Courtney Campbell. Welcome. Oh my goodness, Kristen. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. My goodness, <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's great to see you. And and I just saw you last week. We were at the Global Pet Expo, where that's for you guys um, that don't know, is where all these great new pet products are launched. And we got to see some really cool cat stuff. And it was just so much fun. And um, but it was a lot of work too, wasn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Just the passion, the energy in the Global Pet Expo. It was just tremendous. And they talked about, I mean, how are your feet feeling? They talked about us walking six. <laughs> Uh, I said six. They said it's the size of six Home Depots. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I've that's never, how big the show was. That's how big the show was, and I've never measured anything in the size of Home Depots before. Maybe seven <laughs> lows or you know, eighteen Ace Hardwares. But whatever the case is, it was tremendously fun, and uh, there was a lot of cat energy out there. Yes, energy, yeah. there was, and the folks at World's Best Cat Letter got to meet you in person, and they were so happy they were so they were i gotta be honest they were starstruck 
No, they I don't think so. Giddy. They were think... giddy. Christian, and you guys... it's usually the opposite when they people no. meet me. <laughs> I, we've got people, we've got people welcoming you here in the comments. Oh, and I did just want to mention you. that Dr. Courtney is a board certified veterinary surgeon. Um, you're practicing out in Santa Barbara, California. You're also a media superstar in the in the veterinary world. I know you've been on many national shows like The Doctors and and Kelly and Mark. And, and here you are with us tonight. So we are so grateful. Man, I'm super grateful. I will say that is one tremendous introduction. Don't get me started. I'm about to introduce. Everybody already knows who you are, so I'm not going to introduce you. But uh, no, it feels really good, and I'm so happy to be here. Just I never get an opportunity like this. You have to understand this is a real privilege for me because you know many of my days uh, are mixed, right, with cats and dogs and other species. And so yeah. now I can just focus and luxuriate and feel all of this. <laughs> Yeah, you fantastic know, love. Yeah. Well, it's we good. are going to put you to work in a little bit. We're going to do Let's something do fun next, but we're going to put you to work and we're going to have you educate us on some very important litter box topics. So, Let's but before do we do that, Dr. Courtney, uh, let's kick it off with our first contest. Now, this is called, this is brand new, you guys. You're going to love it. I, I love it so much. It's so clever. It's called the Perfectly Captioned Contest. Now, we're going to show you some really cute photos, uh, and you guys get your creative juices flowing because we're going to give you a chance to caption these photos. Now, you can caption, you know, you think of as many captions as you want, just drop them in the comments, and we're going to choose three winners. So we have three photos and three winners. Each winner is going to get six a six-month supply of world's best cat litter. Now, we're just going to do two now, and then we're going to make you wait for the third one. So uh, let's go ahead and put our first <laughs> our first picture up. I love this. This is adorable. Oh so while while we wait for these clever captions to pop into the comments, um, what do you think of first when you see this photo, Dr. Courtney? Oh my gosh. Well, first, you know, I gotta be honest, the, the posture is so like it, it channels <laughs> something I would do, like try to see what's happening outside, like. What's the business going on outside out there? You know what I mean? And uh, a major case of FOMO. Like he's like, all major. right. You know what I mean? I don't want to miss out on whatever's happening out there. Looks like there's a lot of fun. Uh, this may be even a bathroom. So he's like, yeah. it, it's got to be more fun out there than what's happening in here. To me, this looks like a major case of FOMO. Oh, that's why somebody just said, let me out. Yes, me <laughs> out. Good. I love it. I, I, when I first saw it, I thought this is like a prison break. Like this looks to me like there's that one window at the top of the cell. <laughs> the kitty's trying it. to get out. Um, but there was something else this reminded me of. What? Oh my gosh, we're getting some pretty clever ones. Oh, Cindy says her kitten does that every morning to watch the squirrels. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. And I, I mean, th what I love about it is that this little kitty cat knows that I'm not going to be able to see through this opaque window of this opaque glass. I got to look right through that tiny little slit, you know? That's right. Um, the other thing I think of when I see this is maybe um, the cat box hasn't been cleaned in a few days and, Ooh, and he, she's just trying to get some fresh air. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I know everybody yeah. here, of course, keeps their cat boxes clean, but um, so, okay. Yeah. We got a peeping Tom. Um, yes. the, We've got some really good ones here. So I know, I, okay. these are really punny. I love these. these <laughs> so I think maybe it's time we go to the next photo. Oh, look at oh, this little kitty. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. So I this reminds me of something kind of funny. Um, many, many years ago when I was a kid, we had a cat named Tabby. And we also had, my mom was, uh, had a green thumb. So we had house plants everywhere. And Tabby, <laughs> there was this one house plant that Tabby would like to use as a litter box. Oh, so wow. that's what this, this photo reminds me of. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest. You know, part of it is like, it like reminds me of a little bit of a jungle cat, like King of the Jungle. But my yeah. mind immediately goes to, is that plant safe or not? Right? Because one of the reasons why cats may uh, have inappropriate elimination or they may not use a litter box or they may poop indiscriminately, and maybe they've, they've actually ingested something that could be dangerous to them. So we'll get a chance to talk about some spring dangers, but certainly this is giving me jungle vibes. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. 
No, oh I, and I love this kitty. This cat, kitty actually looks like my first cat. Yeah, but cat, you mentioned so. your mom had house plants everywhere. Uh, yeah. I'm guessing all kitty safe house plants. They were, they were. I don't know how she knew, but I do know that um, the ASPCA has um, a great resource uh, for all pet, pet safe, cat safe house plants. If you are curious, yes, about that. And it's uh, yeah. it's it's really tough because you've got you know cat mom or dad, everything's going fine, then all of a sudden they see their cat is eating something, and now the clock starts, right? Like a clock yeah. starts, daddy. So my heart goes out to all those cat parents where. You have a kitty cat who is too curious about a particular mm. plant, and uh, I know how it feels. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you've seen some of those cases. Yes. So you know, um, I think we've gotten a lot of great captions. I think we're gonna we're gonna hold off there, and we're gonna move into our next segment. We're we have one more photo to show uh, for another chance to caption it in just a few minutes but I wanted to take a minute to tell you about remember at the top of the show I said we're like we're revealing a bunch of cool new things well um amid the exciting new look for world's best cat litter which are we showing that on the screen here oh, not yet not, oh Ooh. there it is there it is there it is isn't it beautiful yeah it's isn't amazing it beautiful? now I want to assure everybody out there that the litter itself has not been changed. It is perfect as it is. So World's Best Cat Litter has not changed the litter at all. In, in this case here with these, I've got something new that I do want to tell you about. But you will, if you're looking for the old, you know, solid red or solid green um, or solid purple packaging, you're not going to see that anymore. Or you might see a few while they sell through that. But this is the beautiful new packaging. And then next, I want to tell you about a new formula. Uh, it's called are you ready? Poop Fighter. Poop yes. Fighter Maximum Odor Defense is joining the ranks of the other fantastic formulas. It's ready to tackle the toughest smells. And this is really cool. It's got a botanical blocker technology, which is proprietary to World's Best Cat Litter, which really is basically just going to neutralize the stench of your cat's business on contact. So no, no more ambushes to your senses after your cat does their business. Um, it's just going to leave a gentle lemongrass scent. Um, you know, so even if you have a kitty that doesn't bury their business, uh, Poop Fighter is something you definitely want to try. And yes, about, I, love, I, should, I love the slogan personally, smells like not poop. Because whatever, know, so great? whatever it smells like, you don't want it to smell like poop. Right, yes. <laughs> that is hilarious. Um, and by the way, it's going to be on PetSmart store shelves starting April 1st. And it's not. this is not an April Fool's joke. This is indeed <laughs> a fantastic new formula. Uh, and, and I also want to mention that, um, again, the, it, it's going to block and neutralize the stink before it even wafts up into your into your nasal passages. So pretty cool technology, all natural, all plant based. Uh, so um, you can rest assured that it's safe for your kitty. Now we're going to move into our educational segment, Dr. Courtney. Um, Let's do it. You know, we, we like to joke around a lot, make fun of, you know, make litter box puns. Um, but I think it's really important that we spend a little bit of time here tonight talking about some of the most common reasons why a cat would stop using the litter box or, or you know, maybe you bring a new cat home and they won't use the litter box um, because it is a serious topic. Not only is it frustrating, but this is the type of problem that can really erode the human animal bond. And so I, I'm so happy that you're here tonight to help us talk about some of those, some of those reasons. Yeah. You know, I, it's tremendous because when I try to think, um, uh, wrap my mind around it, when I try to understand around litter box woes for cats, a lot of times I like to think about it from kitten to the golden years, right? And uh, <laughs> there's different reasons why cats will not use the litter box starting as a kitten and going all the way into their golden years. And so uh, for all of you out there who have young cats, there's a reason why some of them may not use the litter box. Any, any of you out there listening who have middle-aged cats, right? There's certain reasons. And then of course, your older kitties, your, you know, your ancient ones, they're like 16, 18, they're still going mm -hmm. strong. There's also reasons why they won't use it. So uh, when I think of kittens, the first thing that pops to my mind, of course, is dietary indiscretion. Now, anything in the diet, whether, you know, they get into something, particularly one of these spring dangers that we're going to talk about, 
that can cause them to either poop inappropriately or not use the litter box or something like that. Uh, any abrupt change in diet. Sometimes cat moms and dads are just trying to find a diet that their cat likes, right? They're, they're just out of abundance of love. They're just like, well, he may not like that. And if you're switching the foods constantly, that can also cause major litter box woes. And then, of course, when the kitten stage, they can have food intolerance. Now, this is personal to me because as I was <laughs> growing up, I am still to this day, I'm pretty lactose intolerant, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important that we just draw that distinction between food allergy and food intolerance, right? You can have mm. allergic, and when cats are allergic, they'll have itchy skin, they'll vomit, they may scratch, right? So they can have GI signs and skin. Mm -hmm. But when they have food intolerance, it's pretty obvious. It's immediate. Mm. They will have diarrhea and vomiting, and they may not use the litter box. They may poop inappropriately. So just like, right. you know, you and I could be lactose intolerant, there's cats who may be beef intolerant or chicken intolerant. And yes, fish intolerant. It's pretty rare, but they can be. So wow. those are the things I think about with kittens. Yeah. Well, how about uh, how about adult cats? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's say general, say cats. two to two to eight years old. What what are what are what are some uh, medical reasons why yeah, a cat sure. might not use the litter box? So with with middle aged cats, anybody out there who who has a cat with uh, you know who, who has a multi cat household, this is definitely for you because cats mm -hmm. can be particularly picky. When it comes to elimination, yeah. remember cats are, and I think everybody knows this, but I think it's so important as a reminder, cats are what we call middle predators, meaning they hunt for food, right? Naturally, mm -hmm. but they also can be hunted, right? And so they want to be safe at all times. And so that's right. why the, you know, the times where they're the most vulnerable are elimination time. So uh, mm -hmm. they want to make sure that there's low dust. Uh, they want to make sure that the litter box isn't a mess or that it's a very clean environment. Uh, world's best cat litter. It's awesome that there's you know low dust, the fact that it's clumps, the fact that it's easily cleanable, all the mm -hmm. fact that it smells like not poop, right? I mean all <laughs> are very, very important, not just from yeah. a not just from an aesthetic standpoint and from a scent standpoint, but it can be really important medically because uh, certain other things that cats don't like, uh, if the litter box is too out in the open, if the litter box may be mm -hmm. uncovered or covered. Uh, we've always heard a standard sort of rule of having as many litter boxes in the in the house as you have cats, plus one. Yeah. And that may sound easy, but for a cat parent, that's a lot of cleaning, right? And so they, yeah. you know, they, they, there are things that we think about. So behavioral, I would say for sure. I would absolutely say dietary, that's number two. And then, yeah. of course, anything physiologic that's happening in the body, like inflammatory bowel disease or mm -hmm. uh, if you have liver disease or kidney disease, all of these can control uh, all of these can control how a cat poops. So uh, absolutely, the big three are going to be behavioral, dietary, and then physiologic. And physiologic is just a fancy word for saying it's happening inside the body. Okay. And would, would you say, um, so when somebody notices their cat suddenly had stopped using the box, Yes. would you say contact the veterinarian, your veterinarian right away, or would you give it some time or uh, what would you advise our, our folks listening and watching tonight? Yeah, it, it's absolutely tough and challenging sometimes, right? Because uh, you obviously don't want to ignore something that's major, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you don't necessarily want to make a mountain out of a molehill, right? And so I would say that's really important. If your cat is a regular user of the litter mm -hmm. box and then suddenly something has changed, I definitely would give a call to your veterinarian because they're going to ask you, have you noticed any yeah. changes with the elimination, right? If there's blood in the stool, that's that's that warrants a, a visit with your veterinarian. If there's a large volume of elimination, a large volume of poop, and it's brown um, and it's a, a puddle, that mm -hmm. warrants a call to your veterinarian. And if there's multiple attempts, meaning posturing, and nothing's coming out, that mm -hmm. also warrants a call to your veterinarian. So blood, multiple efforts, and large volumes of diarrhea. These are all things that are saying, 
okay, I got to call my vet. Because sometimes when a cat is making multiple attempts to poop, it means they may have ingested something they shouldn't. Mm. One of the most right. dangerous things, as you're very well aware of, Kristen, is something we call linear foreign bodies. And these can be string. These can be socks. These can be towels, ropes, hair ties, all of these. Now, now hair ties usually stick together, so they're not mm -hmm. quite linear. But as a lot of cat parents know, a linear foreign body, as the intestine moves, it can act as almost like a saw while the intestine bunches up like an accordion. So I think at wow. the end of the day, you know, those are the times where you really need to. An abrupt change in your cat's litter box behavior, blood, multiple attempts, large volumes. These are all causes for uh, a prompt visit. Now, there is one little caveat, Kristen, I do want to say. Yeah. And that is cats, cats are very sensitive to routine. So if sure. for whatever reason, you have been, you know, you haven't been home or you changed your schedule or you introduced mm -hmm. a new cat to the household. But let's say you introduced a new human to the household. These are all things that a kitty cat may go, yeah, this is stressing me out. So I'm just yeah. going to go outside the litter box. Or I'm just going to poop in your bed. Now, cats aren't mad at you. They're not, you know, obviously <laughs> they don't think like that, right? They're not mad at you and doing it on purpose but they're just a little stressed and this is their way of showing that stress. Yeah, whenever I, I missed the name, but somebody said their cat likes to pee in the tub, but she'll poop in the box. Oh. Have you ever heard of something like that? <laughs> Absolutely, particularly if, you know, peeing and pooping, if they take different, they take a different time, you know, and uh, cats like, they're just like, okay, the tub, that seems, the tub that seems like a smoother environment. Let me poop. Let me pee here, and then the poop. Obviously, I gotta I gotta bury it. I gotta dig, and the tub doesn't have anything to dig. So so yeah. interesting what they think of that is interesting. And but actually, now now that we're talking about the tub, I I remember something that I learned um, when I was uh, at a at a lecture of a veterinary behaviorist was giving, and she said the the ideal litter box, not that everybody would would or could do this, would be a gigantic plastic storage box that, that gives your cat plenty of time to turn like get in move around turn around so maybe that was what april's cat had in mind by using the tub <laughs> yeah i mean i think everybody who's a cat mom or dad has experienced this is if you get a package and you take you open the box take out whatever contents in there you're looking at it within less than 10 seconds that box will now be inhabited by your kitty cat, right? So this is true. It's <laughs> just something about boxes. And what they've noticed about this too is uh, they've seen this in lions and tigers in the zoo. If they put a box in the middle of their enclosure, uh, you'll have this, you know, two, 300 pound tiger trying to get into this tiny box. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's just something that's so ingrained. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, I, there also are we're talking a lot about poop you know which yeah. is fine because that's where we're talking about litter box problems tonight but um also there aren't there some diseases that make cats drink more water and therefore urinate more and possibly not urinate in the box like maybe they decide to urinate elsewhere because they have a sense of urgency or something like that yeah not only do they have a sense of urgency Kristen, like they certainly can feel the urge to go. Stress is at the top of the list. It's something we call, you know, feline idiopathic cystitis. Uh, mm -hmm. Other terms that you might hear is something called Pandora's syndrome, where there's just an overall sensitivity to their body and their bladder can get really inflamed. And so they will certainly pee in shoes, pee in uh, their bed or on comforters or on rugs. And it can be really challenging because once that smell is sort of permeated that region, sometimes it can be difficult to clean. And that's why enzymatic cleaners are so powerful and so helpful. So anybody who's been yeah. through that uh, knows exactly what I'm talking about. But, you know, female cats get stones too. You and I got a chance to uh, chat oh, about yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell, really. tell everybody what you were just telling me about before. What, something you had that this is something you uh, got to do today. N not today, but very oh. recently, I okay. I unblocked or I passed a urinary catheter. My very first female cat. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal? Of course, you put urinary catheters in cats. But this was the first time I'd ever seen a female cat who was blocked. It is not. Uh, it's not unheard of, but it certainly yeah. is rare. 
And this particular yeah. female cat had a bunch of stones in her bladder. Mm. And uh, one of the stones just went down the urethra and got stuck. Now, you, some might say, well, okay, you know, don't male cats and female cats, you know, don't they get, don't they get obstructed? But male cats, they are at an anatomical disadvantage. Their urethra is skinnier. It's longer. Mm. It's in a bad position. Mm. So they can get obstructed with little urethral plugs, right. stones, uh, you know, little blood clots. But female cats, their urethra is shorter, wider. Mm -hmm. It's in a better location. So you almost never see an obstructed female uh, obstructed female cat. And that was my first time. So it's one of these things that it's like, you know, I say to myself, you, as you're doing it, as you're helping it out, it's like, have I ever done this before? Right. But it all worked out wonderful. And uh, so it's so gratifying to see her finally relieved. I can't imagine. Good. I can't imagine the feeling of, you know, not being able to pee. So I'm so happy that she. Yeah, she, that would be awful. Yeah, right? <laughs> that would be awful. awful. Um, you know, let me just I, I wanted to mention one other new new thing that World's Best Cat Litter is has um, just come out with. And this this kind of goes back to what you were you were talking earlier about kittens. This would be ideal for kittens, for newly adopted cats or for senior cats or particularly fussy cats. This is a uh, world's best uh, good habit formula. Nice. It is a clumping litter that combines their, you know, their long lasting power of, the, of corn with again, natural plant-based ingredients that naturally attract cats to the litter box. So this might be something for a particular kitty in your life. Um, and what's really cool about this one, Dr. Courtney, is they actually worked with a, a veterinary behaviorist to formulate this particular blend. So blend. I love that. <laughs> like I love a, that. <laughs> like because it's a tea we, blend, know, but you know, it's, litter, it's this, litter blend. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful because uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about cats in their golden years. And we know that if you have a senior cat, one thing you really want to be careful of is the absence of poop, right? If you're not mm -hmm. seeing your cat poop, that's when you really should call your veterinarian because cats can get what's called, you know, fecal obstructions. They can get uh, obstipation is the fancy word for it, which is yeah. basically, and not to get gross here, but, you know, the poop is like concrete in their colon. Oof. Remember, the colon's job is to absorb water, right? That's its right. whole job. And if poop sits in the colon too long, the colon will kind of overdo it. And everything mm. in, the, in, in the colon will get very dry. And it, I'm knocking on the table right now. But that's <laughs> how hard it can get in there. Oh. And, and then nothing mm. comes out. So uh, right. this tends to happen in older cats, but also any cat who may have had like a, a, a pelvic fracture, God forbid mm. they were hit by a car, sometimes the right. pelvis will heal and it's very narrow. And in order to get poop out, they have to pass through this very narrow corridor and wow. sometimes it can get st stuck. So what I love oh about this goodness. kitty habits, this good habits kitty, kitty litter is if your cat has just had intestinal surgery or uh, you know if your cat has mm -hmm. this what I call the obstipation thing where you're like stuffed up and, and, and uh, constipated right. and it needs surgery. When your cat goes home as a surgeon, I'm going to call you. I'm going to say, Hey, how's your cat pooping? And you're going to say, right. well, I haven't noticed much poop or I am not sure. But if you have a kitty litter, which attracts them mm -hmm. to the litter box, that's perfect. Because then when I call, because, you know, vets are always talking about poop, right? So I'm going to call, <laughs> I'm going to say, you know, how's the poop? Uh, and then you'll have some some real good answers for that. So I love yeah. the fact that we got a chance to talk about kittens, middle age, mm -hmm. and then, of course, your, your older kitties and their golden years. Yeah, and I'm really glad that we talked about so many different medical conditions because in previous uh, Dear Tabby Lies, we've spent a lot of time talking about behavioral side and, and, and a cat's preference for you know, a clean box or a box without a hood and all these, all these um, things that are really important. But um, this makes me really want to encourage people to like, like you said, if you notice that your cat's bathroom habits have changed or they're not using the box, you know, maybe, you know, give it a day or two to, to see how things are going. But, um, but as you, as you can tell from what Dr. Courtney has shared with us, there could be something really serious going on. So make sure you call your vet right away and, and your vet might rule out 
a, a physiological problem, right? And it could ultimately be behavior. And then we can kind of get back to those best practices of making sure that we have um, a litter box for every every cat in the house plus one, make sure we're scooping frequently, make sure it's large enough for your cat to turn around in and all those good things. So, um, and you know, with that, I think we should do our third and final um, perfect caption contest. Okay, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna pop up our third, our third image. <laughs> yes. And it's <laughs> yes. So this cat's pupils are super, super large. What is what does that tell you? Uh what that tells me <laughs> is I hope I hope this cat didn't get into her owner's stash. I hope she has a secret stash. <laughs> this cat in Colorado or in California. I mean, yeah, where? right. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I mean, you know. It's either she's, she's just trying to take it all in. She's a little frightened there. But yeah, if you yeah. see that, make sure make sure you know that uh, you have put away anything that could have been could have been recreational. Yeah, don't leave that laying around. <laughs> yeah, don't leave that stuff laying around. <laughs> wow, this is great. But, so yeah. Know, I, oh, go ahead. I, no, no, go ahead. I, I'm a little nerdy. So when I see that, it just makes me realize just how acutely uh, it, acutely better cat's night vision is than ours. And uh, it just makes me realize like just how highly attuned these incredible creatures are to, you know, night vision, night hunting, night feels, their whiskers. Uh, I can nerd out about cats because I find them amazing. So <laughs> this picture really, really tugs at my heartstrings. Yeah, cats are so fascinating. Um, while we keep, we, uh, we're getting some great com uh, captions in here. Uh, let's see. Wait, that was my poop. I have. Oh, oh, Angie has Colorado cats. So yeah, she knows, she knows what we're talking about here. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly the case. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this portion up in just a minute. Keep dropping your captions in there. We have a really fun cat poop quiz coming up. Not a oh. pop quiz. It's a poop quiz. But be, before we do that, um, Doc, you had mentioned um, earlier, we, you know, it's springtime as of just the other day. So are, are there any spring tips you want to give us for keeping our kitties safe and happy and healthy? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I when I heard you say that your mom had houseplants all over and that somehow just intuitively she knew that um that they were safe it just is so heartening and it's like what a heartwarming story but the reality Kristen is I don't tend to hear a lot of heartwarming stories I'll hear about a young lady who just went to the botanical gardens right here in Santa Barbara and she thought this plant was absolutely gorgeous she brought it home she saw her cat eating some of the kernels that have just fallen off the plant yeah. and uh she was like oh my gosh you know I I don't even know if this is safe she takes a picture looks it up on Google Images and it turns out that it's say, it's sago palm, which is extremely oh. toxic to cats, right? Yes, and it so is. We, yeah, so during the springtime, if you have sago palms at home, be careful. If you've got lilies at home, be careful. If you've got birds of paradise, rhododendrons, mm -hmm. hydrangeas, tulips, I love tulips around this time mm -hmm. of year. Be really careful. A lot of people are doing a lot of spring cleaning. Right. And so yeah. be careful with the products you're using on the floor. We did have one cat who had tongue ulcers, right? Real Ooh, red. Angry. Really? Yeah, because oh, they gosh. had some cleaning products on the floor and the cat was licking the floor. Um, yeah. Those cleaning products. So and then, of course, for me, I don't know why. Don't ask me, Kristen. I already admitted to you. I had a point of vulnerability. I admitted to you that I was a nerd, but I am <laughs> extremely interested in parasites for some reason. So if your cat is an indoor outdoor cat or you go outside, right? We all go outside, you parasite eggs, particularly round worms, hook worms, whip worms, and giardia can uh -huh. certainly come into the household. So just because your cat's an indoor only cat, um, I say to a lot of cat parents, I say, okay, your cat's indoors. Do you ever go outside? And they say, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, that's, that's a vehicle. They can hitch a ride on your shoes, on your clothes. So yeah, certainly parasites are something else in the springtime uh, that uh, that unfortunately we have to think about. So just talk to your yeah. vet, your vet about a comprehensive parasite control, right? Because these parasite controls are getting so much better now mm -hmm. that a lot of times you can just use one 
product. You don't have to use a multitude of products. Right. Yeah. Now, I can remember back in the day when you needed to use at least two, if not more than two. So exactly. that's exactly. great news. That's really great good. news. Okay. So what do you say we jump into this cat poop quiz, Doc? All right, listen, I'm up for quizzes. This might be my first <laughs> cat poop quiz, but let's do it. Okay, well, you don't even have to, I don't you don't have to answer. So that's, oh, wow. but I'm what exempt? we're doing is we're you're exempt. We are testing everybody's uh, knowledge, how well they listened to what you had to share with us a few minutes ago. And let me just check my notes here. I want to make sure I, I I've got this right here. Um, this is where you all are gonna put your newly acquired litter box knowledge to the test. And we are going to do three questions and then we're going to use that randomizer. Do you remember that from the last show, Doc? Yes. Where we like all the I people that have it. the right answer get random, put into a randomizer and, and it chooses the winner. And we are giving away an awesome pooper scooper for each of the winners. And I haven't seen it, but I've been told it is a really nice scooper. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. This is so, awesome. So yeah, so let's see here. I think we're gonna put the question up on the screen. Okay, question number one. What is one medical reason your cat might suddenly stop using its litter box? So, okay. Yeah, we need. <laughs> so so um, I know you have a pet, ha while we're waiting for the answers here, I know you have a pet hamster oh, named, named Quarantina. Right. <laughs> But um, have you ever had a, a pet cat? I haven't. Now, listen, I um, I love cats. Everybody knows that. And uh, and if you don't, you I want to let everybody know my favorite breed of cat are Maine Coons. I'm just oh, so fascinated. Like, like gentle giants, their whiskers, their mane, everything. Maine Coons are my favorite. But uh, I am highly allergic. Now, there mm. are things that I can do about it, right? I can go see an allergist. And they talk a lot about... Um, like hairless cats and stuff like that. But the reality is, um, you know, there are some cats out there that might produce a little less dander, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they sure. all do that one protein that will certainly send my my uh, my nasal passages in a fit of terror. <laughs> so I've, I've never lived with a cat, but I've snuggled on so many of them just in practice that it's my yeah. My well, and you're con you're contributing to the health and well being of so many cats. So we'll we'll give you a pass. I oh, think thanks. you should look at all the okay. So we've got UTI. Uh, these are some of the answers: crystals, allergies, um, anxiety, blockages. These are all good answers, and I think we're ready to hit the randomizer. Let's see okay. here. All right, let's do it. Okay. Ooh, I love Who's the randomizer. It's slowing down. Who's, Who's it gonna win? land on? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. oh yay! Jill. Jill Brevik, you are the winner of a fabulous pooper scooper. Wow, with awesome. the full confetti. You gotta love the confetti. Come <laughs> I on. know, right? <laughs> you gotta love you gotta love it. You know what the good thing about this confetti is you don't have to clean it up. That's so true. <laughs> yes, I like virtual confetti. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> All right, let's do our cat poop quiz question number two. All right. What is one behavioral reason your cat might suddenly stop using the litter box? Okay, look at everybody congratulating Jill. What good yes. sports we oh, have here. This cat community is so loving. I love it. They're amazing. Yes. They're amazing. Let's see. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting for some of these answers to come along. Uh, Mo says, uh, my daughter is also allergic, but has adjusted to her cat, but still reacts to other cats. That's interesting. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. We've got stress, routine changes. See, they were listening. They were. Traveling. They were. New baby in the house. Oh, we got baby. some smart people here. So uh, true. Multi cat house. That's, that's and I think Kristen, I think we may have alluded to this study previously, but re I think that's that other that study was so illuminating where they basically had like twelve normal cats, uh, sorry, eighteen normal cats. They put yeah. nine in one group. They kept the routine the same. They put nine in another group and changed the routine. Yeah. And the group that remember these cats were healthy. They put them in the group with the. A sort of weird routines that was yeah. not regular. They started vomiting, having weird urinary habits, pooping habits. Wow. They started to basically act sick all because mm. their schedule had changed. So I think stress should be at the top of your differential list when you are thinking about 
why is my cat vomiting or having diarrhea or not pooping in the litter box? Yeah, no, that's, that is great advice. Cats, you're right. They don't like a departure from routine. And also sometimes I think it's important for us to think about change. You talk about changes um, change. in a cat's world and, but also think about it at their level. So a cat's eyes are what, depending on their size, anywhere from like eight to 12 inches off the ground. So right. you might even just move a piece of furniture or leave a laundry basket, you know, in front of the litter box or something. And that could be enough to really stress your cat out. Absolutely. Okay. I think we're getting ready to do our randomizer again. Uh, let's see. All right. This is what is one behavioral reason your cat might suddenly stop using a litter box. We had dozens of, Oh, Ooh. Adam Mims. Congratulations, Adam. Adam. Shout out to Adam, Adam Mims. Another winner. Another winner, winner, chicken awesome. dinner. That's amazing. Winner and a fantastic super super. Great job, Adam. Okay. And let's do our third and final uh, cat poop quiz question. I can't believe I haven't stumbled on that word on those words yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a, it's definitely a, a tongue twister. <laughs> okay, third question is how can you improve your cat's litter box usage? Ah. And while you guys um, drop the answers in there. I don't want you to think that I forgot about the winners of the perfect caption contest. We're going to do that in just a couple minutes here. So you will, we will know the winners um, before the end of tonight. Oh, by the way, if you, uh, if Jill and Adams, you guys were winners uh, of the cat poop quiz, DM, what you need to do is DM World's Best Cat Litter with your contact information so that they can get you your prize. Slide so, into the DMs, man. They're waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got keep it clean, clean box, clean litter, make sure the box is clean, use good litter, like world's best cat litter, bigger go. box, clean the box every day, scoop twice a day. These You guys have got it. You well, guys have got it. I it's mean, awesome. if you do this on a Tuesday in the evening to be this <laughs> attentive, I got to give it to all of them. <laughs> They're doing great. Oh, my gosh. All right, so what, um, oh, here we go, okay. All right, we're gonna hit the randomizer. This is our third and final winner for the cat poop quiz. And by the way, Dr. Courtney, I so appreciate you being here with us tonight to talk oh. among a few other things, poop. <laughs> yes, yeah, listen, it's a pleasure, but we gotta give a shout out to Kimberly Barker. Oh, this is yes. awesome, congratulations. Congratulations, Kimberly. Kimberly, go ahead and DM World's Best Cat Litter here on Facebook. Uh, give them your contact info so that they can get your fabulous pooper scooper to you. Yeah, and you, and, can't, you can't have enough pooper scoopers. You can't. This no. one's really cool, but you can't have enough of them. Yeah, and you know my favorite ones are, are those, um, the ones with the rounded edges because it's easier to get like the corners of the box. Whoa, so, okay. I'm, now this I'm is... Not <laughs> This is true cat mom stuff right here. This is the details we need. These are the juicy details everybody wants to hear about. Uh, right, right, your, right. Your, your, the fine, the fine tuning of cleaning a litter box. You like, the, you like the round, ergonomic shaped. Yeah. Uh, pooper yeah, scooper. Yeah, it just makes those corner, It makes the bit. corners easier. So at least in my in my experience. But the most important thing is if you use World's Best Cat Litter, it clumps so well that yeah. it's really easy to scoop out. So, Beautiful. Um, okay, so we are just about finished. We're gonna wrap a few things up here and we're also gonna share our winners of the caption contest. I'm excited to see who won. Um, I wanna thank you, Dr. Courtney, for spending oh. time with us tonight. Yeah. I want to thank our audience for, for sticking around with us all the way to the end of the show. And thanks for putting up for the technological glitches we had in the beginning. We got it all sorted out. So thank you so much for being here. And um, remember, you want, to, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, I've got the new packaging look over my shoulder here. This, this is what you guys need to look for when you go buy your world's best cat litter. It's gonna look like this now. And just a reminder, it's the same litter in the bag. The litter is perfect. We didn't change it. The only thing we changed is the look of the bag. And then um, also you can find the poop fighter on PetSmart store shelves April 1st. And you can find good habits exclusively on Amazon. So yeah, you're still I, the same person, even if you get a makeover, it's still the same person. I love it. 
That's you know? true. That's, that's true. true. What's on the inside is. But is, that's what matters. Yes. That's, it's, what, that's what matters. All right. So I think, are we ready to do these winners? Let's do it. I can't wait to see who it dun, is. Da, da, da. Oh, and by the way, by the way, you're winning a six month supply of world's best cat litter. What? This is perfect. Yeah. Okay. I can't even see that. I can't. Can you see if there's. Is it me? Well, no, it is very tiny. But... <laughs> oh my Someone God. Someone opened the window. It stinks in here. Surely that was not me. Oh, good, 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 oh, good, 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 that. good. That's great. That's great. I'm glad you, you could. Somebody else. That's what you got to do, man. I work lessons to life lessons there. If, you, if it stinks, you blame it on somebody else. That's uh, right. That's uh, right. Stephanie okay. e. Gurner. I, hopefully Definitely. I'm saying I'm not butchering your last name. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm so glad you could read that. Guys. I just had to enlarge it on my screen, but Stephanie, congratulations. And please DM world's best cat litter here on Facebook so they can get you your six month supply of world's best cat litter. Okay. So who's okay. Who is this? Um, okay. I'm going to let you read it. If you can read it, Dr. Courtney, if this one says this cat popping out of a plant. It says, hurry up with my world's best cat litter, or I will go in here. <laughs> yes. If you don't have world's best cat litter, man, I'm going to use the flower pot. That's what I'm I shout out to Christina Herney. Christina Herney. Awesome. I, nice. I Congratulations, love Christina. Um, Christina, go ahead and DM world's best cat litter so we can get you our your prize. And then we have one more winner. <laughs> this is the best one ever. I love oh it. my this gosh, says, Lori. No, you did it. One. No, this you did it, Lori. Campbell oh my what? gosh, I'm falling out of my chair here. This caption <laughs> says, Dr. Campbell said, What? With the three question marks. Oh, Lori, this wins the day. Lori Allen, uh, I love this one uh, just because it's like nobody's ever listening to me when I'm talking. So, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, I love that. Uh, and thank you so much. This is a, a great. Great caption. Congratulations to Lori Allen. This was so much fun. I, I think I got all the housekeeping things done. Again, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in here for Dear Tabby Live. We have so much fun with you guys. Um, and also, keep your eye on your inbox. Uh, we might be sliding in with some good news. And um, yeah, I think that uh, I think that's probably a wrap. And so happy scooping and um, have a wonderful evening. Yeah, have a meowtastic day. I love the conversation. I I want to I want to commend all of the cat moms and dads out there for the outstanding answers and for listening and paying attention and having fun. Uh, if you have a cat question, please shoot me a line. Um, I mean, you could do it through World's Best Cat Litter. Uh, you could do it through me at Dr. Courtney DVM. And uh, yeah, let's have a conversation. But I just appreciate all of you, and of course. Kristen Levine, the superstar in my life. Everybody needs more Kristen Levine in their lives. I just have to thank you so much for inviting me. This has been such a pleasure and an honor to be with you. You're such a pro. Uh, well, I love working with you and the folks at World's Best Cat Letter are big fans too. So thank you again. And uh, everybody, I guess it's about time to, well, here on the East, on the eastern part of the U.S., it's about time to get ready for bed, which yeah. means, of course, your cat is ready to play and hunt. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. Meow for now. <laughs> Meow for now. Bye. See ya.